Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shai, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In this episode, I'll be going over the 2004 Thai horror film, The Sisters. I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film while breaking down each scare scene and rating them on how scary they are or attempt to be. The only review of this film on Rotten Tomatoes says that this film is the grudge on steroids. I'll be the judge of that. But how scary is it? Sit back and relax and join me as we explore the sisters and tally up the scare score. Our movie begins with opening credits playing a song that made me instantly realize this was going to be a sad film with a beautiful soundtrack. <laughs> woman walks down the quiet hallway of a hotel and approaches a room occupied by a man smoking a cigarette. He looks over at the door as the movie turns to black and white, showing that these events take place in the past. The soundtrack becomes dramatic and eerie as the bathroom door opens and an atrocity comes crawling out. And by atrocity, I mean an obvious ripoff of Kayako Saeki from Juon. This film takes a lot of inspiration from the Juon franchise, and the opening scene makes that very clear, but that doesn't mean that it's not well executed and effectively scary. The opening scene does a great job in creating a tense atmosphere by combining its creepy soundtrack with chilling sound effects. We are introduced to our main character, Pim, who is being interrogated by a police officer. The film is told through flashbacks and explores the events from her point of view. It's a little different from the traditional chronological movie storytelling and is one of the film's weak points. Every time the film cuts back to Pim at the police station, it really detracts from the pacing and overall atmosphere of the film. She recalls the disturbing events that led her to this point, starting with her and her friends in a band staying at a hotel. The band consists of Pim, Nui, Un, Yai, Cobb, and Boy. While walking to their room, we get a random jump scare when Nui decides to look under a door for some reason. A flashback continues the opening scene and shows the band is staying in the same hotel room. The woman is a prostitute and offers the man on the bed a rubber. He smacks it right out of her hand because he likes it. Roll. The band members playing cards hear the disturbing events that are being shown in the flashback. As we see the woman struggling on the ground, Cobb looks under the bed to see where the strange noises are coming from. We see the man lighting a cigarette and holding a bloody machete. He lifts up the toilet seat to reveal the disturbing sight of the woman's head in the toilet. He walks out holding the head and looks up at the air vent. Every aspect of this scene was very disturbing. There is an odd sound playing throughout the flashback, almost like a scream or howl. Combined with the extremely disturbing visuals, it really intensifies the scare factor of this entire scene. Cobb also looks up at the air vent and notices a piece of cloth hanging from it that they didn't see before. They pull it out and find that it's almost longer in length than the amount of tissues I use every night crying about my dad. They hear a strange noise coming from the vents and we get a fake out jump scare when Un suddenly turns off the lights. Boy takes the vent cover off and sees something that terrifies him and immediately walks out. Cobb looks up next and also walks out in fear. Un takes a sip of water and didn't realize he got the limited edition bottle that came with long black hair. Yai tries putting the vent cover back and has the same reaction as the previous two, followed by Un. Pim receives a call from one of the boys telling her to come downstairs immediately. She soon realizes that the piece of cloth has disappeared and wakes up Nui. As he gets off the bed, she sees long black hair quickly move under the pillow. She looks under the pillow, but there's nothing there. She and Nui look up at the air vent and discover what has been terrifying everyone. <laughs> The scene kinda ends abruptly, but they manage to get out of there. This was a pretty decently scary companion scene to the terrifying flashback scene. Seeing everyone leave the room one by one after looking into the air vent created a sense of mystery and uneasiness at what might possibly be up there. Seeing the spirits slowly crawling out of the air vent was pretty unnerving, but the abrupt transition into the next scene sort of killed the tension. I also feel that the spirit was revealed too early in the film. 20 minutes in and we've already fully seen the spirit and how she died. The band and regroups in the lobby and confirm that they all saw the ghost. The elevator suddenly opens and we see that the spirit is wasting absolutely no time as she is already stalking the group. She appears directly behind Pim and Noi, which terrifies Boy. He runs out into the road and gets hit by a truck. 
lobby scare scene was quick and to the point. They've literally just discovered the spirit and are already being stalked and taken out, which is a scary thought. Back in the present, Pim reveals to the officer that she is afraid of that woman. We then see a shot of the spirit in the elevator shaft before the door suddenly closes. This is a perfect example of the storytelling choice taking away from the overall tension and scare factor of the scene. Instead of showing Pim in the present telling us the obvious, the film should have just shown the spirit in the elevator right after Boy got hit. It's an unnecessary interruption that doesn't benefit the film's pacing or narrative. At the hospital, the group looks totally defeated from what happened to Boy. Cobb washes the blood off his arms in the restroom and sees the spirit of a little boy. The boy seems harmless, but his presence is more sinister than it appears. Cobb walks out of the bathroom and starts dragging his leg for some reason. A woman with long black hair can also be seen behind a window. I don't know if she's a spirit or not, but the mere presence of her long black hairiness is creepy enough. Cobb is dragging his leg because the boy ghost is attached to it. Ghosts in Thailand sure love having people carry them around. Yai reveals himself as the most annoying character and says that he wants to go home. He says he doesn't know why, but he just wants to go home. A young girl named Tawan appears and says she also wants to go home. That sure is a lot of people that want to go home. She shows them a picture of her house, and they realize the woman in the photo next to her is the spirit from the hotel. The girl says the woman is her sister named Sang Dao, who worked at the hotel. She doesn't know what her sister did there, but would spend hours with men in their rooms. We are shown the same flashback as before, and are once again reminded that this man likes it. He becomes aggressive and pistol whips her like this is a stick up. This is clearly the event that turned Sang Dao into a vengeful spirit and started her curse. They show this flashback a few times, but we never get a reason or motive behind this man's horrible act. It's simply a terrible act of hate and violence that creates a deadly curse. <laughs> Dawan says her sister's body was discovered under the bed without a head. It was later discovered in the air vent. While everyone is talking, Cobb sees the spirit of Sang Dao and the boy that no one else seems to see. <laughs> He freaks out, causing him to grab a police officer's gun and start blasting blindly. Sang Dao appears upside down in front of him, causing him to commit the R-rated version of this. I'm sure y'all have noticed by now, but I gotta be really careful on how I explain and show some of these scenes on YouTube. I want to bring y'all the best content possible and have to make sure that the channel falls within the guidelines so that I don't risk demonetization or losing the channel. The scariest part of this scene was Cobb being tormented by the spirits in public and no one else being able to see. It shows that this curse can take you out at any time, no matter who is there with you. Cobb is rushed into surgery, but despite having already been at the hospital, things aren't looking too good. The spirit of the boy can briefly be seen in the elevator and underneath Cobb as he is being hauled off. We can also hear a croaking noise which just sounds odd not coming from Kayako. The boy spirit isn't really scary either, showing that being too inspired by other horror films doesn't always work out. The officer interrogating Pim believes the group was on drugs and were experiencing hallucinations. The group tries getting information on Sang Dao but nobody has heard of the tragic events that happened at the hotel. They go to a Buddhist temple and seek out the help of a blind monk. The monk confirms that Sang Dao's body was cremated, but her head was never found. The incident was quickly swept under the rug because of its disturbing nature. It created a deadly curse that consumes anyone unlucky enough to see Sang Dao's spirit. Those who don't die from the curse become insane, which is what happened to a man named Sem. Sem was a maintenance man who encountered her spirit in the vent. There's nothing overly scary about this brief scene. Sang Dao is a terrifying looking spirit, but they've shown her way too much at this point and her scare factor is starting to wear off. The monk was able to dispel the curse from Sem by making him sleep in a coffin before midnight for a whole week. However, Sem is still tormented by Sang Dao and sees her terrifying spirit every night. The monk reveals that Sang Dao has been sitting behind the group the entire time. She touches Pim's shoulder and it's obvious that she wants the group to experience mental torment before before they die. The police officer wonders why the monk knows about Sang Dao, but the police don't. He makes a call to start an investigation into Pim's claims. The monk sends the boys to go find some coffins that they must get before midnight. Pim stays at the temple as the monk prepares the ritual to dispel the curse. The boys are riding in a van, making them look like meddling kids solving mysteries that also deliver wings. As they drive, several cars honk and flash their lights at them. That's because the little boy is casually riding on the roof of the car. Yai believes he 
will be safer at home and asks to get dropped off. He then says the forbidden horror movie phrase, we'll see what happens tomorrow. After they drop him off, we see Sang Dao has also hitched a ride in the van. Unfortunately, she's now shown up way too many times to be effectively scary. I'm starting to feel that she's the main character and the band members are just video bombing her movie. Yai comes home to an empty house and finds a woman sitting alone. It turns out to be Sang Dao, which took me completely by surprise because I totally wasn't expecting her to show up. Nui and Uun manage to find two coffins, but it's way past midnight and the ritual can't be performed. They bicker among themselves about the seemingly hopeless situation and Pim says they can't leave Yai alone. Nui opens the door to the van and sees the little boy inside staring at him. His reaction is absolutely priceless. This actually sort of reflects how I feel about the film. He's seen the ghost so many times now that they don't even surprise him anymore. He just seems tired of their shenanigans at this point. This is why reactions to seeing a ghost that seem genuine can really enhance a scare. Allison's reaction to seeing Kayako in The Grudge 2 is a perfect example of that. If a character downplays a ghost encounter, how can the film expect the audience to find it scary? They arrive at Yai's house, and Sang Dao's face can be seen as Un looks for a light switch. The lights suddenly come on, and Un sees Yai casually hanging out on top of the stairs. Sang Dao peeks her head out and he runs out into the van. The van starts driving away on its own and Un finds himself locked in the van with the spirit. Sang Dao's never been to a driver's ed course and it shows. The van crashes, ejecting Un out of a nightmare sequence. Spooked by his nightmare, Un decides not to go in the house. Pim and Nui walk in to see Yai exactly like in the nightmare. We get a generic scare where Un looks under the van and sees Sang Dao walking past. During her questioning, Pim pinches her own skin and scratches the table with her nails. This odd behavior somewhat hints at the film's ending. Although it's too late for the ritual, Un thinks that it's a good idea to sleep inside one of the coffins. He says another bad thing to say in a horror film that they just have to get through tonight. He lays inside the coffin that Sang Dao quickly finds herself on top of. <laughs> Seeing Sang Dao just laying on top of the coffin was pretty unsettling. Other than that, not very scary. Just like Yai, Un's death was a cut to black off screen death, which I think makes it way less scary. I think that it's just a budget issue because the movie showed in the beginning that it's not afraid to get a little bloody. The next morning, they find Un's body, who tried to claw his way out of the coffin. He also died with a horrified expression on his face. Noi tells Pim that they should go find Sang Dao's spirit at the hotel. He believes it's the last resort to try and free themselves from the curse. One thing I enjoyed about the film is that the band immediately recognized they were cursed and being haunted. The entire film has been them unsuccessfully trying to find ways to break the curse. There wasn't any beating around the bush or denial about what was happening, which was refreshing to see. The people of the temple put Un's body to rest in a somber scene highlighting the film's beautiful musical score. Him and Nui return to the hotel where we see yet another flashback of the terrible events that took place. It's almost as if the events were repeating over and over again on a time loop. Before entering the room, Sang Dao looks over as if she can see the pair coming. We briefly see her emerging from the vent before her head falls into Pim's hands. It's a quick but effective scare scene that makes me wish we got to spend a little more time in the hotel. The hotel clerk gives them Sang Dao's belongings and reveals that she died while pregnant. How the hell he knew about that is a mystery, but with 20 minutes left in the film, we can't be too picky about how we receive crucial information. This would explain the spirit of the young boy who is her unborn child. They find letters written by Sang Dao that were never sent. They head to her hometown and meet with her mother, hoping it will bring her some peace. Sang Dao's mom seems a little odd, but reveals some crucial information about her past. This is an early 2000s horror film, so we must have the POV shot of someone watching through a window. We must. Sang Dao ran away from home a long time ago because she was being abused by her stepfather. She was extremely close to her little sister Da Wan, who backspaced herself after Sang Dao ran away. This is why the movie is called The Sisters, and I think that it's a pretty weak reason to call it that. Da Wan only shows up in two scenes, and them being sisters doesn't really have much to do with the overall narrative of the film. The film's native title is Pi Chong Air, which according to IMDb, roughly means air conditioning duct ghost, which sounds a little dumb, but makes a lot more sense. They hear a strange noise and see a man in chains in another room. She quickly kicks them out of the house and breaks down in tears. They drive off and Pim says that visiting Sang Dao's mom was pointless. Nui feels that the more they find out about Sang Dao, the faster it'll get them killed. The less you know, Pim 
the better. He says they should try to perform the ritual anyways, but Pim doesn't want to end up like Un. He brings up the man they saw and that there was something under the bed. Back at the house, the man sees Sang Dao crawling from underneath the bed. <laughs> She looks absolutely terrifying here, but this scene would have been scarier if this wasn't the 50th time she appeared during the film. They hear a noise coming from the back seat and see Sang Dao's head in the bag. Running footsteps are heard on the roof and Sang Dao causes the car to crash. Back at the house, we learn that the man is Sang Dao's stepfather who was being kept against his will by her mom. This is revenge for the abuse against her daughters which led to their unfortunate deaths. <laughs> Sang Dao's mother holds up a really rusty cleaver, but we aren't shown what happens next. I'm sure we can all use our imagination. After the crash, Pim walks out into the water, feeling all hope is lost. Nui tries pulling her out of the water, but Sang Dao has other plans. She tries pulling Pim deeper and swim towards her using some incredibly good form. Sang Dao looks like nightmare fuel here, and if that was me, the water surrounding us would have looked a lot more yellow. Nui pulls her out, leaving Sang Dao in the water looking like the mer people from the Goblet of Fire. The film reverses back to Pim's questioning and the rest of the events are shown through her narration, which really takes the tension and suspense out of the climax. Nui decided to go through with the monk's ritual and was never heard from again. Movie rules are if we didn't see it, it didn't happen. We finally see the face of the police officer who has been questioning her. He doesn't believe her story and tells her an unrelated story that has nothing to do with anything. Some maniac deleted a bunch of people before hitting backspace on himself. He apparently wrote this on the wall and those of you who know Tai can hopefully shed some light on what he wrote. This causes the officer to believe that he might have been the man who deleted all her friends. In the film's final scene, Pim becomes possessed by Sang Dao, who deletes the police officer, who I guess became cursed by coming into contact with her as the movie ends. <laughs> The final scene of the film seems to break the rules established by its own curse. It appears that simply coming into contact with a cursed person can seal your fate. I think it would have been a more satisfying ending to have the police officer revealed as the man who deleted Sang Dao. Having the police cover up his heinous crime would have made more sense as to why nobody was talking about it. It also would have given a better reason for Sang Dao to possess Pim so that she could exact her revenge at the very end. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was The Sisters, or Air Conditioning duct ghost if you like that better. My friends, this was a pretty disappointing film considering how strongly the movie started. It started out with an interesting premise and some really effective scares. However, as the film went on, the movie became really cliche and tried way too hard to be like the Asian horror movies that came before it. What could have been an interesting and touching story turned out to be really basic. The spirit and curse of Sang Dao, while pretty much a copy and paste of Juon, had the potential to be really scary, but the film unfortunately decided to show the ghost in every other scene. The scares gradually became less scary as the film went on as a result, earning the sisters a less than mid-scare score of 46%. The scariest scene in the film was the flashback scene showing how the curse was created. The scene was extremely disturbing and the music in the background made it all feel very unnerving. The visuals are absolutely terrifying and the image of Sang Dao's head in the toilet won't be something I forget anytime soon. But, as always, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.